So now we're going to start talking about planning and how we can use Business Central to help us plan our production. Now, in this example, I have a sales order set up. So going here and then going into Rudder Cloud, we can see that they have ordered um, 10 bicycles from us. But then when we look to the availability, we can see that we've got minus 10. OK, so we've got 10 on order lines, but we don't have anything in stock. Um, so we need to then generate an associated planning action so that we can make sure that we can actually fulfill this order. OK, now before we jump into having a look at some of the different worksheets we can use to, to, to make up this plan, it's worth mentioning as well that planning doesn't always have to come off the back of sales orders. Um, we can, as mentioned in previous sessions, have planning set up for minimum stock quantities, uh, but we can also set up a plan using what's referred to as demand forecasts. Um, whereby we can go in and say, um, this is how much of each unit we expect to sell in the coming days, weeks and months. So if you do want to manually enter when you are going to be producing some of these goods, um, then we can put that forecast in um, and then we can start including these forecasts in, in some of our planning worksheets as well. So that's just something worth mentioning um, in addition to, to the default planning that, that we have within the system as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate plan so we'll go into worksheets and we'll go into the planning worksheet um, I'll just go into the, the default planning worksheet um, and before I do anything um, I'll just talk you through what options we have when calculating um, well in business central terms um, a regenerative plan so we've got two options here so we've got MPS and MRP now MPS relates to master production schedule Okay, and this relates to the finished goods that we need to make sure that we are producing um, in order to fill, uh, fulfill demand. Okay, MRP, which is currently selected, um, stands for Material Requirements Planning, which um, alongside that master um, production schedule, we need to be planning for those individual components that we need to be buying in. But because we don't actually have a production order um, for the bicycles that we need to ship out to our customers, it would be good to um, just initially plan based on that master production schedule. Okay. Now, in terms of frequency, um, you may run a master production schedule maybe once a week. Again, it depends on, on the volumes that you're selling. But this is essentially going to set up that backbone of what's going to be produced when. Okay, I can then set, uh, set a start and end date. So in this case, I'm just doing um, September till the end of October. And then as I showed you before within that demand forecast, if we did want to also include any of our manual forecasting within this plan, then we can do that as well. But we're just going to do it um, you know, as simply as possible at the moment, taking into account that sales order. So when I click on MPS, it's going to look to that sales order and it's going to drop in the need to create a new production order. It's already got a production order reference for me there um, to facilitate that requirement. We can see here that it's an emergency because it's obviously already on a sales order and we don't have any sort of production action associated with it. Um, so what we can do in, is we can click and we can carry out that action message. Okay, so we can go into process, carry our action message to uh, produce that production order. But what I'm going to do just so that I can shortcut, you know, a couple of different processes is I'm actually going to recalculate the regenerative uh, plan. Um, that production order is not going to go anywhere. And instead of using MPS now, I'm going to switch to MRP, which is going to take that planned production and it's going to say, right, well, in order to fulfill that, what components are we going to need? Now, it is possible to do this in one go. So if you go into manufacturing setup, you can combine MPS and MRP. Now, again, it comes down to the requirements of, of your business, but it is generally a best practice to keep the two separate so you can account for the master production schedule of your finished goods and then the components that are going to be required thereafter. Now, there are some other elements that we need to take into account when we think about planning. So, you know, when we go into items and components shortly once we've generated that that purchase order so we can see how it all sort of fits together um, there's there's a lot of things that we need to take into account in MRP and we won't have enough time to go through that on this session so we'll just have to run with it as we go but if I click on MRP um, and again click on OK it's going to take um, that production order that's about to be created and it's going to say right well to fulfill that we need to buy in these components as well so I'm going to tick all of those boxes 
um, and then I'm going to prepare, oh, sorry, process, and then carry out action messages, at which point I then get the option to say, at what stage do you want to put that production order into? So we'll go firm planned, and we'll revisit that in a second. Um, and then with our purchase orders, we've got a couple of options. So we can either make the purchase orders straight away, or we can actually copy those orders to the requisition worksheet, which we looked at in previous sessions. Now, organizations that may be slightly larger that have separate purchasing departments may opt for that copy to requisition worksheet function if they are carried out as two separate tasks. So for example, if you've got your production planning as a separate process to your purchasing, that may be a good idea just so that you can keep those two segmented within the system. But as I say, it's completely up to you. But I'm just gonna quickly make that purchase order um, and click on OK there, okay? So there's a couple of other things that we need to take into account when we're, we're talking about planning. And maybe I've gone about this in, in a little bit of a roundabout way because we've already obviously created the purchase order off the back of our planning parameters. But just so that we can see the way that Business Central looked at our items and components. So we'll first start with the, with the ladies' mountain bike. Okay. Now we've got our bill of materials and our routing. Okay, so if we were to then go into um, the bill of materials and then look at the total structure of this finished item, we've got the ladies mountain bike um, and then we've got all of the associated timings behind that routing there as well. Okay, but moving a bit further down, so if we come out of um, here and we go past replenishment, which we looked at earlier, and now we go into planning, we can see that our reordering policy is going to be lot for lot. And that is what the planning parameters are looking at within our worksheets. So it's saying we will add this to our plan when we need it. So we're not doing anything clever like ensuring that we've got maximum quantity in stock or whatever. We're only going to plan based on the demand that's coming in. And that's exactly the same for the components that make it up as well. So when we look to the rims, the spokes and all that sort of stuff, all of them are set to lot for lot. So we are being very efficient in what inventory we buy in as a result of our production. Okay. Slightly different for organisations that may have, say, more seasonal demand and they know exactly what they're going to need to produce on, on an annual basis. That you know, may mean that you use stuff like fixed order quantities and, and all of those sorts of things to keep that base level in stock. Um, but in what we've just planned, that lot for lot uh, reordering policy has been used there. Okay. Now, there are a number of associated other things that we need to keep in the back of our minds. Again, don't have time to go into, into all of them, but let's imagine that, for example, two customers request um, these bicycles from us in, in the space of a week. What we wouldn't want to do, well, again, it depends on your business, but what we wouldn't necessarily want to do is do two purchase runs to facilitate the components for those you know, bike orders that have come in maybe the day after each other. So that's when we can then set our lot accumulation period to say, right, well, we're only going to plan every seven days for these. So any orders that come in within that seven day window will be accounted for in that same planning batch. So we are creating one purchase order for that production instead of lots of smaller ones. OK, there is a facility whereby if you did did literally want to do it order by order, you can set order as your planning parameter. Um, but as I say, the, the most efficient way is to do lot for lot to, to save on your workload there. Okay. So lastly, if we go into our purchase order there, um, we'll be able to see that the system based on that demand um, has um, created a purchase order for all of the components that we need to make up that production. And then when we go back to our home screen, we can see that we now have a production order that at the moment um, is in firm plan status. So that means that we haven't actually started the order yet, um, but it is planned for um, based on getting those components in. So that's what we'll be looking at in the next video um, is actually carrying out that production process. To order Dynamics 365 licenses or to sign up to a 30 day free trial, navigate to d365.link forward slash now.